In this video, we're going through 10 different gimbal moves to make people look powerful. We're talking about using gimbal moves to make people look epic. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can use any gimbal with any camera to be able to do any of these moves. And when you're doing these gimbal moves to make subjects look powerful in your frame, you need to think through shot perspective. So where you're framing. And you'll see that I get down low a lot of times with these kind of movements to really give that towering quality to my subject. If you get down low, it has a completely different look than if you're at eye level. So I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's get right into the first one. Move number one is a low orbit using a super wide lens. So I put the gimbal in tilt lock mode and basically I start on one side of my subject and circle all the way around. Now you can do this either wide or close up, but basically you're creating the orbit, just a complete circle around your subject. However, when you use a wide lens and you're pointed up, you're gonna get a completely different look than if you were at eye level. Shot number two is the follow behind. This is like a classic gimbal move where you're just following your subject from behind. But if you use a higher aperture or you're using something like a GoPro or a phone, you're gonna be able to see everything around your subject. So you can really get a sense of the space rather than using a super shallow depth of field where you're just isolating your subject. It gives that third person feeling that you're following someone through a location. Now let me give you a quick bonus tip. With any of these moves, you could shoot in real time, but if you shoot at 60 frames per second or 120 or 240, you can give a completely different quality to the footage. And if you're trying to make your subject look epic, then you should try out shooting in these slower frame rates and seeing how it affects your footage. Shot number three is a jib. So you're gonna need some sort of extension pole on the end of your gimbal. I'm using a monopod, but if you have a light stand, that will work as well. Basically what you wanna do is get your gimbal far out on the pole and do a big sweeping motion. So going from the ground and up into the sky gives you that feeling that it is a jib. This is a big cinematic movement that really shows your surroundings. And something that I really like to do with these jib shots is put some foreground elements in front of my subject so that you see the camera moving past something that's out of focus in the foreground. All right, let's go back to another classic, which is follow in the front. This is going to be a little bit different than following behind your subject because I like to shoot at a super shallow depth of field and put the full attention on the subject and be able to see facial expressions as they're moving through a scene. Now, a quick bonus tip with this one, start super wide and push into your subject or start close up on the face and pull out. And with this, you're going to want to have your camera in autofocus so that your subject stays in focus the entire time, especially if you're using a super super shallow depth of field on your lens. Now the next one is a classic Hollywood that you see in movies like Jaws and that is the dolly zoom. Now this is similar to the last shot in that you're going from wide to close or close to wide. However, when we get into our editing software, you're gonna wanna put a quick zoom in or quick zoom out opposite the direction that you're actually moving. It distorts your perspectives in the background and it also just puts a lot of emphasis on your subject. Shot number six is feet to face. So you're gonna start down low and you're gonna work your way up your subject to their face. Now this is an awesome way to do a reveal. So you can start on the feet, you don't know who the person is yet, and then as you move up, you're getting more information until you get to their face and you get to see who they are. Shot number seven is the scan across. And this, I like to use a long lens. So I have an 85 millimeter on my camera and I scan over specific elements that tie in with what my subject is doing. So with this scene, I'm scanning across the eyes, the camera and the boots as he takes off and walks in the other direction. And each of these are isolated by this simple dolly from left to right or right to left. Now, because this gimbal move is so close, you're only getting fragments of information. So this might be something to use at the beginning of a scene, or it could be used when you really wanna focus in on some specific element that ties closely in with what your subject is doing. Shot number eight is the fake drone. And you can get these cool aerial looking shots by using the same monopod or light stand that I was talking about earlier. You just wanna get the camera as high as you possibly can and move through your scene as if it was a drone. Now, one thing to really sell these shots is have some sort of foreground element that you sweep by. So for this shot, I'm moving past the trees and you get the sense that you're flying in the air versus being a camera on a gimbal. Now shot number nine is side tracking. So this is similar to the forward or back. However, we're just moving to the side of your subject. 
and I'll put my gimbal in lock mode and I'll just move left to right with my subject following them. And you can do different styles of shots here where you could go just their feet, just their upper body, or you could start wide and walk yourself in to really focus in on one element. I think what's really cool about these gimbal moves is instead of just focusing on one movement, left to right, forward, back, try to put two together where you're moving sideways and moving forwards, and that's gonna create more dynamic looking footage. Now shot number 10 is my favorite, and it's the spiral. So you're gonna be moving from a wide shot into a close up, but you're also circling around your subject. Now this takes a little bit of skill to get right, so you're just gonna wanna practice this over and over, but when you're using this move, you're able to see all of the background around your subject and it's a super dynamic rotating shot. Now I have one more bonus shot for you and that is shot number 11. And this is a dolly to the left or right with a pan in the opposite direction. So this is a shot that I do all the time on my drone. It creates a nice cinematic arcing motion and it adds a subtle motion to all of your footage, making it more dynamic. Now this is great when your subject is small in your landscape, and to make this shot better, have some foreground elements that you're moving slowly by. Now here's a full sequence with all of these gimbal shots mixed together. Now when it comes to gimbal shots, just getting shots of someone walking around a forest isn't super interesting, but if you can tie some sort of story element into it, you can make a sequence that looks really cinematic. So think through an action that you want your subject to be doing. So for my sample here, Jesse was walking through the forest to get this epic shot of the lake in the distance. So what you wanna do is think through that moment, that ending shot, that climax, and then work backwards. So what happened before that shot? And then also think about what happens after that shot. And when you put all that together, it creates a sequence, which is a short Short story and it's more enjoyable to watch than just random shots of someone walking through the forest. If you want to see more videos on how to use your gimbal and get awesome looking footage then check out this playlist right here and that's it. I'll see you on the next one.